So we need more information. What do data scientists do? What is their role in an organization, in business, and in society? These uh, important que questions are going to be asked by our, our next uh, uh, speaker, who is representing our other silver partner, SAP. So he is a data scientist and a sexy man himself. In SAP, in Global Center of Excellence, please welcome Mr. Dimitris Agayotis. so the cameraman will have a tough time. Um, we are going to start by saying a story. It's not a story, even if I'm going to talk about you, it's not a story about you, it's, not, it's a story about me. It's a personal story. It starts with hiking. Actually, uh, a couple of years ago, I started hiking. I, it's a new hobby that I added to my list. And I thought that it's a nice one because, you know, you're getting close to the nature, you can see nice sceneries, and at the end of the day, after a stressful period, you can feel some relief out there, all right? And one day, early in this January, uh, I got a, I, I, I called a friend, and we discussed to go to Lake Marmon, wow, for hiking. It's a convenient place because it's just almost one hour away from, uh, from Athens. And what you can see on your right, it's the Google Maps where actually I used. I grab my phone, I open Google Maps, I type Lake Marathon, press the button, voila, I have the route to go there. Cool. Let's see what happened behind the scenes in Google Maps. First, after putting the address, actually the Lake Marathon, different kind of things happened regarding geospatial uh, details. So uh, first we had the reverse geocoding where uh, my, my input has been analyzed to coordinates and some other crazy stuff happened behind the scenes. And this was the initial information to understand where I want to go. The second thing, and the coolest one, is that this information has started to be enriched with different kind of things, like what the rest users are doing. So to know, to calculate the traffic, for instance, what, is, what are the point of interest close to the place that I want to go? What are, what are the intersections that I have to follow? What is the road type? What is the road complexity? And also what is the history in order to predict and calculate what will be the traffic and what will be the optimal route in that particular time and day based on the history. After that, a unified table, a unified data model created, data pre has to be pre prepared, and then has been fed into a model, <coughs> a machine learning model, an artificial intelligence model, which actually returned me back my beautiful map. Voila, again. How much time it takes you to, to get this information after Googling? Oh, three seconds? Yes, behind the scenes happened all this stuff. It's crazy, isn't it? Now I have information about how much time I want to spend to go there. What will be the traffic, alternative routes, what I will pay for tolls, whatever I need. You know, you know it's, it's, if you think about it, I don't know how the world ran, just to run 
before Google Maps. I can remember my father asking people how I can go there. You know, we started going, we were starting going around the corner. Yeah, it was crazy back then. But you know, there is another one aspect behind the scenes. In order to go for hiking, I need equipment. And what is the basic equipment to go for hiking? Just boots. Without boots, you are going to hurt your legs out there. Now I want you to give the context about ACP to understand how machine learning and what we saw uh, in Google Maps happens in enterprises. Imagine a, a retailer, a good retailer, a big one, the ones like the ones uh, like the one that we know uh, that operates across the world with thousands of stores, thousands of franchises, whatever. And he wants to optimize his business by including machine learning and the value of the data that keeps in hand. All right. So our good retailer has several things. He has data from social media, what you tend to buy, what you tend to like. Some, most probably, they bought some data also from some uh, data vendors. They have demographics about the places that they are selling uh, things. Uh, competition data, what the others are tend to, be, to, 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 to sell. Internal historical demand, what the people turn to buy. Pictures of a product and from the competition to understand what is the trends and what is also uh, the, um, uh, the passion, all right? Uh, geospatial data, human capital resources data, vendors that are creating uh, the stuff and materials to create boots, um, customer data, for instance, Dimitri Sagagiotis, I got a, a boat, a boat uh, a couple of years ago, and now he bought a new one, he bought a new one, um, and things like that. And he wants to use this data, and most probably we are talking about big data, in order to uh, find some value for his business. Let's see some cases where actually we can bring value. Eliminating overstocks and out-of-stocks cases. That's a trillion dollar base, a trillion dollar business, okay? So, uh, stores wants to bring things into the store and sell them. They don't want to keep it in the, in the salt. And also, they, they want to have enough uh, quantities to sell you when, you when you need it, and to avoid also to order it or to send you to another store, because most probably, you will not buy it. Understanding consumer behavior, Adjusting prices, you know, when it's the best, the best period to, to, to give sales or even to, to sell more expensive. Um, what else? Visual product search. You can get a picture and you can find what is the product. Uh, Cashier free stores, like the Amazon Go case, where you can walk into a supermarket, uh, put on your basket things, and without visiting the cashier, you can leave. And your, the bill will, uh, will be expensed to your credit card without any interaction with human. And there are, there are several more things that can happen over here. That's, this is what SAP is doing with businesses. And I think it's, it's more excited by Google Maps. Uh, and finally, of course, we want to visualize it. And not only to visualize it, we want to, put, to offer tools to allow the customer and the people out there to use self-service analytics, press buttons without being data scientists and finding insights into their data. That's the whole case. But who is this person who did all these things? Is this lonely guy on the snow? Maybe. Let's jump into some definitions and I can come back to this lonely guy. Artificial intelligence, we talk about it, we're talking about it, uh, we, we don't know it right now exists, it exists only as a, um, as a statement, 
Then we have machine learning. It's the subspace of artificial intelligence. And what it's doing is that aims to teach computers the ability to do tasks, to do tasks without explicit programming. What means that? What, is that? what does this mean? That you, 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 you're, you are avoiding the whole case where you have to code all these rules. For instance, if Dimitris wants to leave from Athens to go to Lake Marathon and the traffic is heavy, the weather is bad, and he's <coughs> whatever, then uh, give him these rules. This is not happening right now. Huh? Machine learning, it's actually provide a formula, a statistical and mathematical formula, which the outcome of this formula after the input of the data, it's a number, it's a true or false, or some other things. And then we have deep learning, which is a subfield of machine learning, and it's a new one, it's a new development uh, after um, some, some uh, enhancements in some mathematical formulas that we are using in neural networks. Uh, where actually, this is where the magic happens, where you can uh, do image recognition, image classification, face recognition, natural language processing, you know, this crazy stuff you, that you see and you say that it's artificial intelligence. What is the common thing here is that across all of them, we are talking about data science. Yes. So this is the guy who is doing this stuff. He's the data scientist. But let me tell you, who can name himself confidently a data scientist? Only this guy. Yeah. There are many skills that you have to learn to become a data scientist. And most probably, you need at least three lives. So I will tell you that data scientist is a unicorn. It's mythical creatures that is very hard to find them, and most probably they don't exist. I'm not a data scientist, all right? I'm, some, I'm someone who works with data. I'm not a unicorn, by the way. So, in order to have a data science project, we need a data science team, not data scientists. Data scientists are actually people with different roles and working with different kind of data, different kind of approaches in order to fulfill uh, their goal to create a data-driven uh, problem, to, to solve a data-driven problem. And talking about the team, uh, this, is, this is what my team is doing. And as you can see, we are, uh, we are a team, a global team of 70 experts across the world uh, with high diversity of skills, nobody is, uh, is uh, uh, you cannot find two identical persons in this team. Each one of us has different skill, skill set. And uh, of course, this is what makes a data science team um, uh, successful. But what, what it means to become a data scientist? Actually, it's this, uh, it's this very well-known uh, well Venn diagram of Drew Conway, that it says that you need to be, that to combine software engineering skills, math and stat statistics, and domain expertise. And I can imagine, since you're coming from universities, that already you have the math and statistics, you already have the coding, you have, you wrote some code somewhere. So with a little, uh, uh, with a little effort, you can become at least machine learning engineer. Eh? But the whole thing is, the tricky part here is the domain expertise. How, how you are going to learn what kind of problem you want to solve, how you can enhance the process, uh, or, or imagine if, you, if, we, if we talked, for instance, for math and statistics and domain expertise where we have the traditional research there, imagine that you are working in a project to cure cancer and you don't know what cancer is, you can't do it. That's the difference. So if you, if you really uh, want to, to work on data, you need to consider to learn about the domain that you want to work with. And what they are doing, what they are doing these poor guys for a living, data scientists, you know, the machine learning part and the artificial intelligence, in general, is only the 20 
percent of the time that we spend in a data science project. And to be honest, it's even less since now there are some cool softwares that you can even train a model without having, uh, without having a single line of code. The painful part is the first two steps. Problem definition and prepare the data. That's our job. We need to understand what is the problem. We need to understand the data. We have to clean, to clean them, to transform them, to make things with the data in order to <coughs> prepare them and feed them to the model. And also we have to be sure that we are not biasing the data with any, with any uh, way, uh, you know, things like that. But the reality is that the painful part of this process is the, is the part that gives us the knowledge of the business and of what we're trying to solve. So it's very important, and at the end of the day, it's the most, uh, well, let's say, the most nice uh, part of the project. Going back to the, to the, to my hiking in Marathon Lake, because so far I have <coughs> shared my personal story. Well, actually, I did what you see. I took my my phone. I grabbed my phone. Uh, I got a friend, and we head uh, to to Marathon Lake. I attached my GoPro camera, and we start going to this place. This is the national highway in Athens, and you know, as as we were going here. I was feeling a little bit weird because the, the road was becoming narrower, uh, a little bit strange, and I, was, I, has the, I, have the, I had the feeling that this is not the proper road to follow to go there. After a while, and you will see it now, I'm, coming, I, I, I'm ending up to a crossroad, and Google Maps says to me, turn left, but I, but I have the feeling that it's not the right, so I said, let's go straight and see what happens. Then I regret it, and I said, no, I will go back because Google Maps knows what is knows what it, what is what is doing. Uh, so I turned back. I'm sorry. I was very. So I turned back, and we went to the road where I followed, and as you can see. It was full of mud, and even if I can see it, I can feel it with my senses that it is not rational, I was following Google Maps unconditionally. And you can imagine what happened. My car stuck, get stuck there, and after a couple of hours of having some calls and nobody could come there and get me from the service, from the road service or whatever, uh, yeah. I ended up there, and I will tell you what happened. What happened there? The first case is maybe we have a robot conspiracy, and AI wanted to conquer the world and start killing people like me. I don't believe that. So most probably happened something like that. Artificial intelligence, for me, and it's not my statement, it works like relationships. If a robot fails initially to win your trust, you're never going to follow it. You will be very suspicious when it says something to you. But on the other hand, if this robot is accurate enough from the very first beginning of your relationship, you are willing to ignore your senses and the common sense to follow almost unconditionally what the robot says. And that's happened with Google, Google Maps. You know, 95% even more of the times that I'm Googling something, it's accurate. It tells me where I have to go. And you know why I didn't challenge it? Because people don't like to make hard decisions. If you have a trustful person, a trustful machine, a trustful robot that can make hard decisions for you, you just let it go. You just stop thinking about your decisions. Key takeaways from what we've seen so far. We are using machine learning AI results every day in our life, directly, like Google Maps, or indirectly, like SAP, where you go in to buy a good, where an SAP system beforehand has uh, helped to reach this place. Machine learning is here to support the decisions, 
not make them for us. Keep it in mind. Don't let Google Maps tell you. Uh, data, science, data, data science is not a buzzword. It happens out there, but it's a team effort. Business environment uh, offers some of the best and most fascinating data science projects, so don't ignore it. I have two more slides. What comes next for you if you want to become a data scientist? <laughs> Build strong foundations. The important here is to, to understand math, statistics, and algorithms. The next is coming based on the time that you start digging on that. Start playing with data, download data from Kaggle, I don't know, from other sources, and start doing some stuff there. Watch online courses, read books, but the most important is to find mentors. If you want to study data science, it's like st trying to study medicine without having specialties and a specific uh, road roadmap. So it's crazy out there. Start with a real problem, choose your domain of expertise, invest time, and maybe the most important bullet here is that you have to stay ethical and keep the algorithms and the data objective. You don't know, you can imagine what kind of power you have because people, if you build a, a nice machine learning algorithm, as I, as I showed you before in Google Maps, they will just retire of any decision and they will follow it. For instance, now in US courts, they are using machine learning to support the decisions for, uh, for the court. Imagine that you have a biased, imagine what will happen if you have biased data and biased algorithm from the opinion of a machine learning engineer. It's crazy. Uh, don't be impatient, it needs time. Talk to people and learn about real problems. At the end of the day, you are not going to solve a, a virtual problem, but people's problem. So don't stay into your computer. Get out and talk to people. Uh, last thing. Apply for internship in SAP. We are opening positions. We will have in a couple of weeks here one in Greece as well in my team. Uh, create learners in, in jobs.sap.com. And just to know the outcome of what happened with my car, uh, two kind people uh, were having a walk, a walk with their dogs out there. And luckily they found me and brought me with, a, with their SUV and dragged me out of the mud. And we ended up to a restaurant close to Agio Stefanos, drinking Cipro and knitting for eight hours. And what is the what is the <laughs> the lesson learned here? That even with a machine learning error, you have always uh, the chance to turn into something good. Thank you very much.